So I'm going to go out on a limb. And I'm going to say that most of you guys watching this video own Tesla stock to some degree or another. And that's why we need to talk as Tesla shareholders. Because 2024 could be the year that Tesla reaches levels that you cannot even understand sitting here today. All-time highs, yeah, well, you, you could go way past that. Or 2024 could be a brutal year. And that brutality could be starting here soon. Some of the things that I've seen in the markets recently that we will talk about here in this video are not good. Some of the upcoming catalysts that we will have for our markets potentially could be very negative as well. But in turn, this could be positive for Tesla. We will explain exactly why that is here in this video. But most importantly, I don't care if you hit the like button or subscribe to the channel, to be quite honest with you. I want you guys to be able to make the best financial decision possible with the most relevant information possible. And by the end of this video, I would love it if you could comment down below and let me know what you think about this. Are you in the good camp, the bad camp? Are you somewhat in the middle? Are you undecided? Let me know down below in the comment section. But let's be clear. I do think there is more downside for the broader markets. And let me tell you exactly why. It's pretty simple. It's probably something that you have already noticed. When you have gotten good economic data, when you have gotten reassurance that we're not heading into a recession, that inflation is falling, that the Fed's likely to pause, stocks are selling off. What happened Thursday? We got the CPI report and stocks sold off from the highs to the lows, 2% on the NASDAQ. That's not a small move. Let me chart this out for you. You sold off from the high to the low 1.95%, almost 2%. Although CPI came in better than expectations and there was a less than 20% chance, according to the Bloomberg terminal, that that would actually happen. So we got better than expected economic data and stocks sold off. That's not a good sign for at least the near term. To be quite honest with you, I think the markets are waiting for a smoking gun as far as really bad economic data or a really strong reason why stocks should fall. I think we're in this purgatory kind of environment where the economic data just keeps coming out too good, where it's giving you this weird kind of market reaction where stocks sell off, but it's not bad enough to give you that 10% correction yet, that 20% technical crash although we have rallied aggressively we're even seeing this in earnings where stocks are reporting pretty good earnings it's like the better earnings you report the worse your stock gets sold off you're better off reporting terrible earnings and your stock has a greater likelihood of actually moving higher following earnings great example is tesla tesla reported fantastic earnings Everything was better than expectations. Auto gross margins, better than expectations. EPS, revenue, net profits, everything. The stock sold off based on one pretty benign comment Elon Musk made about maybe raising prices in the future. That was enough of a reason to sell Tesla stock off about 20%. This kind of market activity highlights an under the surface kind of problem that investors are starting to get a little concerned. Maybe that's for good reason. The biggest catalyst that we will have that could negatively affect our markets is right around the corner, and that is student loan repayments. Some of the data around student loan repayments is quite worrying. For an example, the average monthly student loan repayment is 200 $78 per month. If you have a master's degree, your average student loan payment is $572 a month. Moody's expects this could drain the economy of 
disposable income in the U.S. by $73 billion next year, or to put it in a different way, 0.27% of the United States GDP. These student loan repayments are kicking in as 60% of adults in the United States live paycheck to paycheck. Four in 10 high income consumers live paycheck to paycheck. So this extra $250 to $550, U.S. citizens with student loans are going to have to pay every month is quite a big deal when you actually look at some of the data here. As of 2022, 43 and a half million Americans have federal student loans. So this is not just a small portion of the economy. This is a large portion of the working force in America today will have to start paying back these student loan payments starting on October 1st. Interest starts on September 1st. So I think the markets right now under the surface are actually quite worried about this. So I think until we get clarity on if this is going to be a huge negative for the economy or not, the markets are going to be a little bit wobbly. And I think this actually could play a role to when we get the first Fed rate cut. That's the part that could be very positive for Tesla. Tom Lee expects the markets to hit new all-time highs by the end of this year, mainly because the Fed's going to have to cut rates a lot sooner than what the markets are currently expecting. Now, just for context, Tom Lee was the analyst that was made fun of the most in 2022 for telling investors to buy Tesla at $100 per share, buy Meta at $90 per share, buy Apple at 125 and look at where those stocks are today highly made fun of turned out to be exceptionally correct so i think when he speaks you definitely need to listen at the very least even if you don't fully agree you need to take it into consideration now this clip is from cnbc so it's a little bit laggy but i think the lagginess is worth the info that you will get from it breaking down how all of this may balance out for your money after what has been and let's be honest, a pretty doggone good start to the year or mid-year for stocks. And bringing our friend Tom Lee of Fundstrat in person on this epic hour. Tom, thanks for coming down here as well. You've been one of the bulls. You have been right. Inflation is coming down. The market has been, I think, soaring is a pretty good word. We're up 17% year to date. But what have you done for us lately? Where are we going from here, Tom? Uh, well, Brian, I think that was a great rundown you gave. Uh, There's a lot there. <laughs> yeah, but I think as people peel the onion, this was a very good inflation report because it's setting up for the next two months to see inflation slow even further. Because the things that you mentioned, like core services, X housing, that came in at 0.22, like 4% year over year, but you're dropping two big months of August and September last year. So the next two months, that thing's going to start to fall. I think markets should have rallied pretty hard today on, on the just, inflation report. Well, they did. We were up 400 at one point of the Dow. We ended in the green just a touch, but we came down. We lost that 400. Is the Federal Reserve done raising rates? Or with today's number, is it you know possible we get another rate hike? Uh, yes. Yeah, so let's say I was originally in the 60% chance that July was the last hike. I think it's now in the 80% range. I, I okay. think that the Fed is done hiking for the cycle. There's a big difference between done hiking and starting cutting. And you know, listen, we're in the media. I fully accept this blame, folks. We're either one, all or nothing, right? Yeah. Is there any talk of a rate cut at any time soon, or is that just nonsense? And we're going to have to live here for a couple years. Uh, I think rate cuts are definitely coming next year. Let's say that really? most people think it's second half because the Fed doesn't want to tighten rates. But if inflation's falling, they have to cut rates. Otherwise, it's actually constricting the economy more. I, I think they're going to be thinking about cuts early next year. Is that one reason stocks have done well? Not just here, by the way. Around the world, Europe has done well, number of emerging markets. But is that the reason that we're seeing a 40% jump on the NASDAQ this year? Is that all you guys, you know, the hedge, your hedge fund buddies, 
they're looking out nine to 12 months and they're looking out maybe at those cuts and that added because stocks generally go up when there's more liquidity, not less liquidity. That's right. And, you know, I think the stock market's just looking at the tenure at four and saying, you know what, a four percent tenure, even if it's there for five years, is actually a decent level for the stock market because it's it's a high enough rate to keep too much capital from forming. But it's a it's it's a low enough rate for companies to earn a lot of money. So it's it historically it's nirvana for PE. The PE should be closer to 20 times if we can see the 10 year state around 4%. Yeah, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when 4% was considered impossibly low. That's right. And by the way, when I that was like four years ago. <laughs> yeah. And now we're doomed at four. But I, I think the the bears would make the argument, Tom, 4% by itself, not bad. 4% with a trillion plus deficit heading to 50 trillion in national debt, a trillion in consumer credit card debt, eight couple trillion in, in housing yes. debt, that it's, it's the level of debt, not the level of borrowing cost, that's the problem. That's right. All the things you described threaten the dollar as reserve currency. The dollar's held up great. I think when the, if the dollar really starts to weaken, then we have to worry that 4% isn't the right rate because they're going to have to raise the rate. But I, I think for now, the stock markets and bond markets are saying dollars that can we end the currency. The, putting you on the spot, I know we end the year higher in the S&P 500 than we are right now. Uh, absolutely. I, I think we're going to take out all-time highs uh, wow. before the end of the year. The markets are not expecting the first Fed rate cut for seven months from now until March 20th, 2024. That's when the markets expect the first Fed rate cut. And then by May, we expect another rate cut. By June, we're expecting a pause. July, you're expecting another Fed rate cut. In September, you're expecting another Fed rate cut. In November, let me double check this. You're expecting another rate cut. And that's what we have as far as Fed futures. So at every single Fed meeting next year, besides one of them, you're expecting the Fed to cut rates. But for seven months from now until March, you're not expecting a cut at all. If the student loan repayments kick in October 1st and you start to get some very contractionary data in the economy, the Fed will cut rates because what's happening right now is the fed funds rate is five and a half percent well inflation has fallen that means you're actually getting much more restrictive as inflation is falling the real uh terminal rate in which the fed had been saying for a long time in 2022 was somewhere around two percent because that's basically the break even of inflation. If you take inflation and you minus the Fed funds rate from that, you get the real yield for the economy. So for an example, if we're at five and a half percent Fed funds rates today, but your year over year inflation number is 3.2%, that means you're technically restrictive by about 2.2% today. So even if you cut rates a couple of times, you're still restricting the economy in theory. That's the running theory. So it would make sense to potentially see a rate cut sooner, especially given that can somewhat be offset by student loan repayments that will suck money out of the economy like a vacuum. This means that we could see lower interest rates, meaning that monthly payments for things such as financing a Tesla or buying a new house could fall, and that would be positive for a Tesla, for credit businesses, but at the same time, the economy might not be in such a great place in 2024 or really the end of this year heading into 2024. So what does this mean? And how vulnerable is Tesla? I think that's a big question as likely 90% of you guys are investors in Tesla. So I think for Tesla specifically, it's important to understand a few things. Tesla typically caters to a higher income earner anyways. The average Tesla Model 3 owner in 2022 had an income of a hundred and thirty four thousand dollars per year this is at a household in income so almost seventy thousand dollars a piece man and wife 
That's a pretty good household. You're over six figures for your household. That's great. What about a GM? Well, the average household income for a GM buyer is $66,800 a year, less than half of Tesla. So right now, Tesla is catering to a higher earner as is. Now, that's obviously going to change over the coming years, and that's going to start to make its way down as one Tesla's become more affordable. Tesla starts to sell more vehicles and bring more vehicles to the market. These numbers are going to change. But right now, Tesla is like the Apple and GM is like the Android. For context, in that same analogy, Android shipments have fallen 25% year over year. Apple shipments have fallen 4% year over year so if you go into a a, a weak economy and right now you're seeing a, a weak economy for things such as smartphones for this specific example if this were to happen to the broader economy and you did go into something like a recession well yeah i'm sure this would not be a positive for tesla right i'm not saying that this wouldn't be a positive for GM, but it would be worse for a GM or a Ford or a Toyota than it would be for a Tesla. Now, I like to think about things kind of as the bigger picture here. We have the Cybertruck coming in 2024, and I think that will be a very big deal because if you're heading into a recessionary kind of environment and you have a new product launching that is revolutionary, this, there's nothing like the Cybertruck. That's a better situation to be in rather than not. I would rather head into a recessionary economy, potentially, with a brand new product that will make everyone turn their heads and say, what the hell is that, rather than not having that. So I think that is a huge benefit for Tesla heading into next year. I also think it's important to not label a recession as a definitive kind of level, right? Let me explain this a little more. If we're going to have a recession, it's not clear if it's going to be a mild one, a hard one, or a depression. Now, given what we've been through the last three years, I find it very hard to make an argument that you're going to go through a deep recession or depression like some people say. Why? Because the government is going to stimulate the hell out of everything if that were to happen. It's 2024. It is the year of another election. If people are losing their jobs, it's a very wise political move to give out free stimulus checks. That's very well liked by the mass public. Maybe not you if you're an investor and you've been in the markets. The average person is not. Okay, let's differentiate that as well. The average person is not in the markets. They have not been through the, excuse my language, shit show the markets have been in especially your small and mid cap stocks for the last 18 months. They don't care at all. They would love some stimulus checks. Don't be wrong there. So I find it very hard to make an argument of that worst case scenario. Good news is if you're a Tesla investor, Wall Street is expecting 2024 to be pitiful, terrible for Tesla. In fact, Wall Street is expecting Tesla to have its lowest growth year since it became public in 2010 at 27% delivery growth and 29% EPS growth. The average in the last three years is 60 plus percent delivery growth and cumulative year after year, the last three years, and 85% EPS growth the last three years, also cumulative. So that's a far cry from what we have seen recently. That's already expecting to some degree a recession. Now, I like to think the recent catalysts that we have seen or upcoming catalysts are going to be positive for Tesla. That's the Cybertruck. That's the refreshed Model 3. That's going to be the transferable tax credit to the dealership starting on January 1st that is going to create an incentive for all of America to buy EV, not just taxpayers that pay $7,500 or more of taxes every year. I think that's going to be a very big deal. Now, even for context, what we've seen during the great financial crisis was Tesla actually did well after that initial year and a half that was really bad during 2008, the beginning of 2009. Tesla from 2009 through 2010 grew their revenue by over 
100%. This was at a time where in 2010, the unemployment rate was still north of 9% the whole entire year. So even when things were this bad for America, Tesla grew its revenue 600%. If you have not seen the poll that I have on YouTube currently, go vote on this. It's, will the U.S. enter a recession in 2024? It's surprisingly close. At the time of recording this video, 47% of you guys expect the U.S. will enter a recession in 2024. 48% of you guys expect there to be no recession. So that is beating by about 1% right now. And 6% of you expect not the U.S., just Europe and China. So it's pretty close. I want to know your guys' feedback, so go check that out. But let's summarize this video, the important points that you need to know. If we're going to see a recession, it's going to be caused partly, for the most part, by the discretionary income being sucked away by student loan payments. $250 a month on average for 45 million borrowers in America is a lot when most people don't have $400 in their bank account. That's a pretty big deal. If we can get through that with no recession, that's great. And we're probably not going to get a recession. Now, if we do have a recession, Tesla's in a very good position to do well during a, during a recession. And even if we do get a recession, I think Tesla's still going to see better volume growth than 27%, the current estimate on Wall Street for Tesla, and 29% EPS growth. So even in the the worst case scenario, as as far as getting a recession or not, I think Tesla's still going to do well. Now, if this recession were to be really bad, I don't see that as likely as well because we're just going to stimulate the economy and do what we've done over the past three years. And no, it would not cause inflation if you are in a recession stimulating the economy. If you're in a real recession, it stimulates the economy. It doesn't cause inflation. You got massive inflation because we were not in a recession giving out stimulus checks for years. Okay, so big difference. I wanted to differentiate that because I know someone's going to comment down there and, and say well, we wouldn't do that because it caused inflation. No, that's that's not true. So I believe either way the economy turns out in 2024, Tesla stock will do exceptionally well. I expect over 50% delivery growth. I expect over 50% EPS growth. That is much higher than Wall Street's estimates. That means estimates need to go higher or they're ultimately smashed when Tesla reports earnings, and that could send Tesla to all-time highs, but even higher than that. That could send Tesla to five, $600 per share as interest rates come down and investors look towards growth. Because even if we avoid a recession, it's not, gonna, it's not, it's not like the economy is going to grow that much. Nobody's expecting the economy to grow like impressive like growth rates. Like, three, four, five percent, that's not expected. That's not going to happen. So investors, they value growth a lot more when there's low growth and no invite, no recession. That's a perfect kind of recipe for Tesla stock to do very well. We're not even talking about robo taxis or full self-driving or any of the things that could happen from now until this time in 2024, right? August, 2024, Tesla's going to be a lot higher than it is today. That's the bottom line conclusion. Let me know what you guys think about this down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you made it to the end of this video. You guys enjoy the rest of your day and your weekends, and I will see you in the next one.